The success of an Invisalign treatment really boils down to two aspects. One is certainly patient cooperation, wearing the aligners sufficiently. And the other is the tooth movement plan called the ClinCheck. Is it uh, predictable? Are the movements that are designed on the computer going to be able to play out in the mouth? And you have to look at this on a tooth by tooth basis. Sometimes certain teeth will not move properly and that will make the aligner fit improperly and that will lead to discomfort and then lack of compliance. Now here we have a case, it's an unusual case. This patient comes in like this, they had four teeth removed and what you'll see in certain cases, especially years ago when orthodontics was more old school and when extractions were much more common, for this patient, the extractions resulted in too much space and so the orthodontist wanting to close that space leaned the teeth in, the front teeth in drastically. So if you look at the front teeth, you can see how they are inward uh, and retroclined. We call this loss of torque. There were some braces systems back in the day that really didn't even care about torque and they just wanted to easily and quickly move upper teeth inward. And this can lead to problems. In this patient, there's a lot of wear on the anterior teeth and also the patient has a tight feeling in his jaw because his lower jaw was probably pushed back or is at least held back because his jaw position is dictated by his teeth. I don't want to go into that. I just wanted to set the stage. What you see here is we are undoing that to a small extent. There will be some spaces anteriorly and the patient is going to have crowns done on numerous teeth. So this is a big case from a prost standpoint after the ortho. But what I want to show the orthodontists out there and orthodontic residents is that if you look at the canine, that tooth is definitely, I'm not going to show you the panoramic radiograph, but you can, if you're experienced, you can understand where that canine came from and where the root is. The root is leaning mesially and we want to tip that tooth back. So visualize the apex of the root. Every time I let go of this, it moves. But if you visualize the apex of the root right now, which is going to be somewhere up in the gray over the red color. And if you look now at where my final tooth position is, that apex is going to swing distally. But we that movement requires distal root torque. Now with a bracket, it's hard enough based on how you position the bracket, but it will happen because your purchase point on the crown with a bracket and a wire is great and you're able to execute that force at the crown to act at a distance at the apex. So you're placing a moment on the tooth a force at a distance for torque. But we don't need that in this case if we want the tooth to end up a little bit more forward because the root is already mesial. Uh, so the root apex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just undo the distal root movement. Now, do you notice how if you visualize the apex, it's probably going to be the swinging point and the root apex will not be moving. Now I'm only moving the crown. This is a vastly easier movement for Invisalign and you're not sacrificing anything because I'll still be able to play out this case with the restorations regardless of how that canine was inclined. So this is what you want to look for in a lot of movements of a lot of teeth. If it's an anterior, if it's a central incisor, it could be a mesial or distal angulation that isn't really necessary to complete your goals. You want to minimize root torque whenever you can without sacrificing the end result when it's in an aligner case.